following on from Wargaming's terrible decision to implement the Cobra T-54, they've also introduced the G.I. Joe Wolverine, which is a Cold War vehicle compared to the Cobra T-54, which is a World War II premium at Tier 9. So, what are the key differences? Well, the Wolverine is completely different, to be honest, and that is because this is essentially an STRV S1 that gets a missile launcher that can fire two missiles within one missile, if that makes sense. So you can fire uh, two at the same time, so you get two missiles going in towards your opponent. So it's very, very interesting. I've enjoyed using it, testing it, seeing whether it's actually any good. And the first thing that I want to say is that this vehicle is painful in some games, and in fact, it's not very... It's not what I would call traditionally OP, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. You can see the missiles going off in towards the Sheridan here. Um, they have fairly decent penetration. You can then also swap back to your standard rounds whilst also still tracking your opponent. So this is something that I've found really, really effective with this vehicle, is to go after your opponent's by using both uh, the actual rounds like you're seeing here and then firing off the missiles at the same time. Obviously, don't fire them into the rock that you're sat next to. Um, that would be a start. But the key thing is, is that you can track opponents with one shell. You can then fire your missiles. You can swap back to your reload, fire your gun, then swap back to your missiles. And in that time, the intraclip reload of the missiles will have uh, come back which then means you can fire your missiles again and then go back to firing your standard rounds. So there's loads of different ways in which you can play this vehicle, but it all centers around the fact of using these missiles and using them quite effectively. And you can see here up against the enemy M60 where we're just punishing him with not only the actual rounds, but the missiles at the same time. And you can see those continuing to go into the, the vehicle. And you can see here we could fire four different missiles at the same time. So this is a very, very campy tank. And I'm sure that you guys will have already realized that if you have seen any gameplay, if you've played the STRV, it's even more so on Cold War because you have to remain undetected in this thing. As soon as you get detected, it's pretty much curtains because although you have okay armor against some people, 90% of people will be able to actually pen you from the front. And also, if any of your side armor is available, you're basically getting penned as well. And remember that this doesn't have the damage to kind of put your middle finger up and go, no, 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 you can't just YOLO me. It doesn't have that. <laughs> and so as soon as they maybe have a little bit of a brain, maybe they actually track you um, and keep you in place, then this tank becomes super, super boring and really, really not fun to play. So I wanted to caveat this vehicle. Um, although it can be good, which I can 100% vouch for, this vehicle can be good in scenarios like you're seeing here where the opponents keep coming out into the open or maybe where you're just able to farm people from distance. But there is just... Too many opportunities where you get caught out or maybe you don't get a map that is convenient to be able to snipe from or maybe there you get a map that just doesn't have any bushes and so there's no way of you remaining hidden. And that's kind of where I feel like this tank absolutely sucks. Um, and this is coming from someone that's had some good games. I've had good games in this vehicle, um, but there's certainly fewer and f further between than something like the Cobra T-54. And considering that this is not a cheap vehicle, it's going to cost you about 11,000 gold, which is about £35, roughly. Um, obviously, you'll have to check that yourself. But yeah, I would not spend £35 on this vehicle um, uh, especially not because it's necessarily absolutely trash, but because it's there's just better tanks that you could play, and there's far better autoloading uh, kind of missile launchers in the game that I'd rather play. Things like the AMX-13 SSCA, which I'd much prefer, um, which is the light tank. Uh, it's just way more versatile, but if you are interested in playing this, it isn't bad. 
it's certainly going to be able to get you a few uh, wins at least um, uh, especially if you are used to playing these kind of TDs and stuff like that then I wouldn't necessarily say it's awful um, but as soon as people start coming towards you or you're having to face off against multiple people this tank sucks so there's kind of my word of warning to you guys as to maybe thinking about um, buying this tank and why you maybe wouldn't want to um, the one good thing about this is it is fast backwards so you can kind of hightail it out of there should you wish to um, and that is about it there is not a whole lot to this little tank destroyer other than the fact of using the missiles but we'll show you uh, another gameplay in a second after we've kind of finished up this one and in fact nothing else actually happens in this game until this point at which uh, you're about to witness as we go forward in the gameplay where we actually spot the enemy light tank that is available on the enemy team for us to potentially farm in the BMP2 and yeah it just um it doesn't go well at all because remember this has no turret the missile launcher can't be swapped and there's no way of being able to hit anyone unless you're in the siege mode or out of the siege mode um, which means that yeah it's just way harder to be able to do anything and unfortunately you get taken out but we deal 6,760 damage it's not an amazing silver earner since you don't really get that much XP even if you have an amazing game in this because you're usually sniping a little bit more with this vehicle um, which means you get less, less base experience because you're not spotting for yourself um, and therefore uh, kind of credits correlate to your experience therefore you end up earning less silver even on these sorts of games than you would in some other vehicles um, and other premium tanks in Cold War so there's kind of that so that's kind of my take on this one but let's jump into the next gameplay showcase a little bit more about the nuances of the vehicle uh, instead of the kind of holistic nature the next replay is on the new map or re-released map that we had previously in the game which is Corellia and this gameplay is much like the previous one and pretty much much like you're going to be seeing with this vehicle throughout if you do decide to purchase it and trust me it's a very very relaxed gameplay style you can set up in your bushes you can set up in an area where you think you're going to be able to avoid uh, getting detected kind of hard against some of the light tanks since although your camo is good it's not absolutely broken like it would be on the world war 2 mode so there is a little bit of things to be said for playing this vehicle um, and kind of making it work and you're seeing here us um, kind of setting up a position we're getting a few bushes uh, to put in the way and we're just trying to hunt down someone to be able to farm on the enemy team and we'll catch someone out as we go through this gameplay and that's primarily what this vehicle is good at, is trying to catch people out, making them aware that this tank is not one to just kind of sit in front of, because it has 440 alpha damage uh, with its standard, and then with the, pre, uh, with the kind of missile launchers that you can use on this vehicle, you can then expect to get 360 damage per one missile. Um, of course, you fire two at once, which is 720 alpha, and there is six missiles in one singular clip. And trust me, when you're up close and personal with vehicles, and you are actually in the siege mode, uh, you can come away with some really, really good results against them because um, these rounds, they get fired super quickly and they're pretty devastating each one when you successfully pen because you get good penetration. Um, but you have to be a little bit careful um, with when you push in and kind of move forward because it's not nice uh, when you start getting absolutely pumped by enemy vehicles from all directions remember uh, when you're in the siege mode your frontal t armor is actually pretty good as soon as you exit the siege mode your armor becomes pretty much trash um, but at least you can move potentially um, but yeah in this game you see very very slow to begin with and that's typically how this tank becomes um, or how you can end up with some really really good gameplays is that you kind of have to wait for the scenario to arise to be able to come away with like good good gameplays because remember uh, this vehicle relies upon not only your team being uh, kind of 
bad to the point where like the enemy team can progress and get some damage um on your team and then you're kind of farming them as they kind of retreat or whatever it might be but also that you need to um have the game where you can kind of uh find people out in the open or whatever it might be now unfortunately for us the m60 on the enemy team is just absolutely pumping us <laughs> and he's just firing round after round after round which is a little bit unfortunate and um, we had to kind of leave out of this area but you saw there spotted for maybe five seconds uh maybe three tanks actually fired at us and we're on 300 health so even if you do have the armor towards the opponents uh they often find ways of getting around you in this it's not particularly the fastest vehicle and it's not particularly the most intuitive vehicle you'll see either so you have to be very very wary as to what you're doing um Luckily, the uh, premium rounds are good in penetration, but not like superb. You do have to be uh, like very good at aiming, I guess, with this vehicle. Um, and if you do aim, you get really rewarded because the accuracy of this vehicle is really, really good as well. Um, so you've got all of this to think about with this vehicle that maybe you wouldn't have with some of the others in the game. Um, but overall, uh, kind of one of my favorites that I've played in a while. And you can see here coming up against some of the opposite numbers, uh, like this Magash, who's out in the open. Because of the reload, because of the uh, kind of damage that you can deal, it's pretty nice. Now, we tried to swap to the missiles, um, but unfortunately, the Magash actually ends up uh, being taken out before we can do that. And it's now just a case of trying to find some extra damage somewhere uh, to come away with a better result. And of course, try and get some extra damage or extra silver, because that's pretty much all I play Cold War for anyway, personally. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my opinion. Obviously, it's down to your own playstyle whether or not you'll like this vehicle, because it is, as we've said, pretty campy and pretty um, lonely, I guess. And it's not very action packed. You've seen both of these gameplays, I'm sure you know it's not absolutely action-packed and it's primarily finding yourself in the right bush. But nonetheless, in this game, picked up 364,000 silver with a times 2 silver boost. So yeah, you can make a little bit of money, but you'd be better off playing other vehicles if you want that as your option. Other than that, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you want to check out the other broken premium vehicle that was released as with this vehicle then i highly recommend you do because this the other vehicle the cobra t54 is way way better um and actually blatantly pay to win in my personal opinion um and of course i highly employ you to go and have a look at that vehicle and see what you think and let me know what you think of both vehicles if you've seen both videos but yeah i hope you join me in that and i hope to see you there goodbye